What's up guys, welcome back, Leo Pazzo Productions. Thank you very much for tuning in. In today's video, we're gonna be having a closer look at this brand new video switcher. Now it's too late. So guys, this video switcher is made by OC. It is the Go Stream video switcher. It's going to allow us to do live streaming directly from the switcher to multiple different platforms. I have been using it now for the last few weeks, been testing it out. I've been also been learning in more detail within the menu and all the settings. There's so many features. It is a pleasant device to be working with. And today in this video, we're gonna be covering all the kind of options and buttons and features that we have here on the front of the switcher along with the back of the switcher here which we have a bunch of inputs and outputs that we have access to and along with that the detailed menu that's going to allow us to adjust and fine-tune any kind of settings that we have access to and also to be helping you guys to navigate through the video if there's a specific section that you're interested in watching I'm going to timestamp the video down in the description down below so you can just see all the list of different topics that we're going to be covering in this video click on that timestamp and it'll take you directly to that section of the video but let's jump right into it the front of the go stream switcher right over here so having a look on the right hand side of the switcher you will notice that we have this little t handle switcher that's going to allow us to switch and transition between the different inputs that we have plugged in here to the back of the switcher just next to that we do have some options over here for the transitions for an example fade to black we also have the auto transition and a straight cut transition so having a look here onto the left hand side of the switcher at the very bottom we do have a row of buttons which is labeled as PVW which stands for preview so when you go ahead and select for an example preview 1 or HDMI 1 input it's going to be highlighted in green and that's not what's going to be displayed on your live stream that is just giving you a preview on what you may switch to when you're ready to make that switch okay so right above that we're going to have a row of buttons which is labeled as PVW GM, which stands for program the program buttons are going to be highlighted in red and basically what that means is the program is actually what is going to be streaming directly to your live stream that's what the viewers are going to be seeing next over here on the top left hand side we do have the power on and off button pretty straightforward just hold and press it for a few seconds and it's either going to power on or power off the unit right below that we do have a live stream button so all we need to do once we're all set up we can just press the live stream button and it's going to stream directly to those platforms that we've set up within the menu just next to that we have a bunch of buttons over here for the audio input for an example mic one mic two input one two and three and four so we can control the audio of the HDMI inputs that we have connected along with possibly two microphones or even a line in and we also do have control of the uh, auxiliary which can be the audio from the video that's going to be displayed here or shown via the auxiliary option which can be the SD card because we can load videos onto our SD card or we can also connect a USB webcam as well so it's very nice that we can control the audio right here on the switcher by simply pressing which audio device you want to control and right next to that we have this little dial here that's going to allow us to adjust the volume the gain the fading the sensitivity whatever we're going to be able to adjust within the audio level we'll be able to do that right there so just to the right of the audio controls over here we do have the macro settings there are eight buttons over here in the macro settings which is going to allow us to basically control the picture in picture they do have Aussie right out of the box have programmed four different picture in pictures the macro settings which are basically going to be the top right bottom right uh, top left bottom left just next to that we do have a little dial and the menu button again we're going to have a closer look at that later on in the video but long story short you press the menu button it's going to come up on the multi view screen and then we can use the dial to either select and to scroll through the menu just next to that on the right hand side we do have a bunch of buttons over here we have the record and the play 
button. So for an example, whatever videos you have loaded onto the SD card, you want to go ahead and play that or stop it or switch to the next video. We can go ahead and simply do that right here on the top right hand corner of the switcher. We also do have the option to record our live stream. So that SD card is not only going to play the videos that we have on the SD card, it's actually going to be able to record our live stream to the SD card, which is also a fantastic feature. We can go ahead and press record and stop record right there. So just below those record and playback options over here, we do have the next transition buttons. So for an example, we have two on air buttons. We have the key, the DSK and the background, which we will talk a little bit more in detail once we go through the menu. So now that you guys have a little bit better understanding on all the buttons and controls that we have here at the front of the switcher, why don't we have a look at the back of the switcher to take a look at all the different inputs and outputs that we have available. Starting off over here on the far right hand side, we do have the 12 volt DC in, which is going to allow us to power the switcher and the cable and the power adapter is included with the kit. Just next to that, we do have the ethernet cable, which is going to allow us to plug in the ethernet, which is going to supply internet. And then we can go ahead and directly live stream right from the switcher itself. So just to the left of the ethernet cable, we do have two USB-C inputs. Again, one of the USB-C inputs is going to allow us to plug in our webcam. And the other USB-C input is going to allow us to connect an NDI input as well. So just next to the two USB-C inputs, we do also have have two HDMI outputs. So for an example, HDMI one is going to allow us to connect to our multi view monitor display screen, which is going to show all of our inputs. And along with that, the audio level meters and also our menu. And for an example, HDMI two output is going to basically show us what we're going to be streaming directly to our program. So you can have two screens set up. Again, one is going to be the multi view, which is going to show you everything that you have plugged in, which is definitely very useful. And the other HDMI output, again, as I mentioned, is going to show what that final video source that is being outputted from the switcher to your live stream. Next to those two HDMI outputs, we also do have four HDMI inputs, pretty straightforward. You can connect four HDMI inputs and along with the audio, from those HDMI inputs. So looking at the very far left of the switcher, you'll notice here that we do have two microphone inputs. So for an example, a microphone one, you can go ahead and plug in a wireless microphone or a shotgun microphone directly right into there, microphone one, 3.5 millimeter jack. So for microphone input two, you can go ahead and plug in another microphone if you like to via the 3.5 millimeter jack, or we can go within the menu settings and set that microphone two input to a line in. So if you do have some audio coming from like an audio interface and you want to send that audio to the switcher directly, you can do that by simply connecting to the 3.5 millimeter jack on microphone one or microphone two, depending on what you want to do for your audio setup. So just to the right of the two microphone inputs, we do also have an option to connect our headphones. So therefore we can go ahead and simply connect our headphones to the 3.5 millimeter output jack so we can go ahead and monitor the audio. So I think we have a better understanding on all the buttons and controls and features that we do have here at the front of the switcher. We also took a closer look here at the back of the switcher and all the inputs and outputs. I will mention that on both sides of the switcher here on the left hand side and the right hand side, we do have this little grill for basically intake and exhaust of new fresh air to kind of cool down the mixer. Again, I'm going to estimate approximately from left to right is about 12 inches. From bottom to top here looks like it's about maybe four and a half, five inches or so and the thickness over here looks like it's about an inch and a half so overall it is nice and small and compact and also lightweight i will also mention that the switcher is made out of plastic but overall design and build quality seems like it's well built it doesn't feel cheap or poorly made it's really nicely thought out and the layout and overall my first impressions and use over the last few weeks now have been fantastic i say we go ahead now and head over to the multi-view screen and take a closer look at the menu and settings and features.
Okay guys, so here we are with the GoStream switcher all connected. I have my HDMI inputs connected along with my HDMI output. And here we are looking at the multi-view screen and that's gonna be showing me all of my inputs and all of my kind of pictures and videos that are playing along with my audio level meters and my final program, which is being outputted to my live stream. So we're gonna go over this in a little bit more detail, but just to kind of show you quickly behind the scenes on everything, the way it's kind of set up, so you have a little bit better understanding. So here I have the GoStream switcher where I have my HDMI inputs and my HDMI output. I do have my ethernet cable. I also have the DC in. I can go ahead and use a microphone if I wanted to, but I'm not set up for that right now because I'm just making this video to kind of show you guys the layout and overall how it's functioning. So just to kind of briefly show you my HDMI inputs that I currently have right now. Here I have my one camera, which is the Panasonic GH6. I do have an external monitor connected there and you'll notice that I have two HDMI's one HDMI is going from the camera to the monitor which is the HDMI input to the monitor and the other HDMI is actually the HDMI output from my external monitor from my camera which is being sent right here to the switcher okay so that is actually plugged into my HDMI one if we have a look here on my screen in the multi view screen HDMI one right there that's my GH6 which is that camera right there over here just to the right of me I do have the Z cam which is a cinema camera and I have the same idea the HDMI from the back of the camera is going to my input from my monitor which you'll see right here and the output from my monitor is actually being sent to my uh, switcher right here the ghost stream switcher and that is actually focused on the switcher that's what the camera is pointing at on my HDMI 2 and you'll notice right over here on my multi view screen HDMI 2 that is what the Z cam my second camera is looking at so over here we'll have a look this is HDMI 3 if you'll notice I have an HDMI cable right here going into HDMI 3 input and this HDMI 3 is actually being sent from my PC if we take a quick little peek over there you'll notice that I have my PC monitor and that is basically just playing a video for us so I do have open YouTube right over here I could be playing a file off my computer or I can be playing basically anything but it's the HDMI out from my PC so just to kind of show you guys I do have my mouse over here I'm just gonna move around my mouse and you can see that this is basically YouTube video playing and I have it set back to loop okay so just to kind of give you guys the overall layout right now HDMI 1 HDMI 2 HDMI 3 and HDMI 4 which I currently do not have anything plugged in at the moment so now that we have a better understanding of our inputs over here, let's take a peek at the top, at the very two top screens. The one over here onto the left of the top screen is, you'll see that it's labeled as program. And program basically means that that is my final output. That is what I'm going to be streaming. Okay, so that is what exactly what the viewers are gonna be looking at. Over here onto the right hand side, you'll notice that it says preview, and that is what is gonna be coming up. So I'm just previewing it. I'm selecting what option I want to to basically display next for my viewers and I can just have a nice preview I can do any edits if I need to basically do like picture in picture or whatever PIP or do any kind of an adjustments I can do that all beforehand before I'm ready to make that switch to go to my final program to basically where I'm going to be streaming so next now that we have an idea on the top left hand side program which is also labeled as PGM and also PVW for preview we got my HDMI inputs so right over here on the bottom left hand side this is a video which is playing back on loop right now this is a video that's playing back on loop from the SD card there's an SD card right here at the front of the switcher might not be the best view right now but there is an SD card in there and I've loaded up some videos onto the SD card mp4 and it's playing right now on repeat so I have that right there under the UVC which we can also instead of using the SD card in this box right here we can actually connect an external webcam via USB-C so just looking here at the back of the monitor we do have two USBs or just looking back here at the back of the switcher we do have two USB-C inputs and again one of them can be used as the webcam and so right now I'm not using the webcam I'm using the video which I have loaded to the SD card
Right over here, you'll see that it's labeled as still. This is where I've loaded a PNG uh, photo onto the SD card as well, and I've loaded it to still number one. So I can go ahead and play that still or kind of have it displayed at any time that I want to. Just to the next of that, I do have still number two, which is again, a PNG file that I loaded onto the SD card, and I just selected that that's what I wanted to be displayed on still number two. Over here on the far right hand corner, very useful, lots of information. You can see over here starting on the left, we have HDMI 1, 2, 3, and 4. So those are my four HDMI inputs and it's showing me my audio level for each one. And we do have control within the menu and also within the switcher to adjust these settings for the audio if we like to. So to the right of the four HDMIs, we do have auxiliary right over here. And again, the auxiliary is what is the audio level meter for my UVC. So whatever video that I have playing off my SD card, that is the audio that I'm going to be able to be controlling under the auxiliary. Okay, so if it's not the video from my SD card, it will be the audio that I'm going to be capturing from my webcam if I were to plug it in via USB-C at the back of the switcher. So next to the auxiliary, we do have mic 1 and mic 2, and that is going to be basically the levels of the two microphone inputs because we do have two microphone inputs over here, which I don't currently have connected. But if we wanted to control the microphone 1 and 2, input gain level volume we're going to be able to do that within the menu and we can, can see there right there on the audio level meters next over here on the far right hand side we have pgm and that is the audio level for pgm and again what does pgm stand for it stands for program so my final result my final audio that i'm going to be sending out to my viewers so basically I can mix up all of this audio and my final result will be right over here underneath the PGM. So now that we have a better understanding of the audio level meters here, let's take a look at stream one, stream two, and stream three. So when we are ready to go ahead and stream to possibly three different platforms, we can go ahead and enable that within the menu over here on the switcher. And it's going to basically show like a little check mark on each one, depending which one we've enabled. Next over here, we actually have record option right here. You'll notice that the numbers are at zero because I'm not currently recording to the SD card, but I do have the option to record directly to my SD card by simply pressing the record button right here onto the switcher. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press record and you'll notice that the numbers are gonna start counting over here. And you'll notice that over here, we have the space or time that's a left that's available on this SD card. Again, there's 13 gigabytes left. There's about one hour and two minutes. And you can see that it's basically just kind of counting down to the time that we have left remaining on that SD card. I'm recording currently my live stream, which is just gonna be recording this, this my PGM, my program, my final result to my viewers. So now that we have a better understanding how everything is laid out and we have a better understanding on audio level meters and all the features, what we're gonna do now is just go ahead to the switcher and we're gonna make our first switch. So what I'm gonna do is just toggle this up and toggle it back down and that is going to be making the switch so while i do that you guys have a quick peek here on the screen so my preview is going to get swapped over there to my program so that is what i'm going to be displaying next so i'm just going to go ahead and move this switcher and bang there it is it just switched it over for me and i can go ahead and go back okay you can see that the wipe transition that i currently have it's kind of going across the screen right there as i move the switcher back and forth the little t-bar handle so now for an example if i wanted to go to let's say hdmi 3 so what i'm going to do is just press hdmi 3 you'll notice that it is now highlighted in green so now when i go ahead and switch it's going to be showing one which is hdmi 1 but then it's going to go ahead and show Show HDMI 3 so let's check that out which one is HDMI 3 that one is HDMI 3 which again which is coming from my PC so let's go ahead and do this switch right now bang HDMI 3 is now being displayed and then there's my preview so you know what let's say for an example um, I don't want to show that next I want to show um, auxiliary I want to show that over there on my program so let's go ahead and do that let's take a look at the switcher what I'm gonna do is just find the auxiliary button, which is right over here. You'll see that it's highlighted in green. So now it's gonna be previewing that for me right over here on my preview screen. So now when I go ahead and make the switch, that preview is gonna be displayed there on my program. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's make the switch on the switcher. 
and bang, there you go. It just took my auxiliary, which is playing from my SD card, and that is the program which my viewers are viewing currently right now. We can do the same thing with the still one and still two. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's find still one and still two. Let's tell it the switcher what we want to do next. So let's go ahead with still one, which is going to be displaying my logo. So why don't we go ahead and switch it right now? Bang. So there's my logo on the program. Now that's what my viewers are going to be watching. My logo, I can go ahead and switch it back. I can switch it back, switch it back, okay? Now if I wanted to, let's go back to the switcher and let's select still two. That's what I want to preview. So this Aussie logo right here, that is what I want to show next. Let's go ahead and bring it over there to my program, my final result so my viewers can see the logo. And bang, there it is. Okay, very fantastic. I really like this switcher right here. So you don't always need to use this T-bar handle when you want to make the switch. Okay, so let's go for an example. Let's go back to one. I switch it over to one. So now one is playing. Let's switch it over to number three. Now number three is playing and number one is next. Let's go to number two next in my preview. Let's switch it over. So again, you don't always need to use the T-bar handle. We can also use the cut and the auto and we can also have these adjustments to use the wipe and the mix and the dip and the previous so let's go ahead and use the mix let me show you what mix looks like because again the wipe is showing us the transition okay so again just to show you again we have that transition it's wiping we can change the transition if we want to but in this case i'm just going to leave it like this for now we can go into more detail once we have a look at the menu but having a look here, let's briefly have a look at the mix. So if I go ahead and select mix, now it's going to transition it, but it's going to be transitioning it into like a fade. See how it's fading it? It's not wiping it. That's a difference between mix and wipe and dip. So we're going to have a look at dip next. So let's go to the switcher. Let's go ahead and select a dip, which is right over here. That's the dip option. Okay, so now I select dip and what dip is that's basically going to be dip to color So I currently have it selected to I can't recall but I think it's either black or red So now when I make that switch, it's actually going to be fading to that black. Did you see that? See if I'm just doing the switcher nice and slowly Bang it just faded it to black and it transitioned it So it's very nice that we have those options right there at our fingertips um, One other thing that I wanted to show you guys briefly we do have these macro options over here So for an example, let's go with uh, macro number one So we're gonna press macro number one and what that's going to be doing now Because I have pre-selected that I wanted to show HDMI one on the top left hand corner I want it to show me while I'm basically talking to you guys and showing you guys the switcher and I have the switcher right here in front of me which is just fantastic it just kind of works out so if I didn't want to be here on the top left hand corner because I'm kind of blocking the switcher a little bit I can put myself here on the bottom left or the top right or the bottom right so let's just go ahead and do that so why don't we just go back to the switcher to show you guys how to do that we'll just take a look so this is going to be top left this one's going to be top right this one's going to be bottom right and what did i say i wanted i wanted bottom left so let's go with bottom left i just press right there mem3 that's what i pressed and now where are we bang we're on the bottom left of the screen right over here which we have this pip which again is showing the picture inside the picture. So guys, overall, that is how the switcher is working. You can see that it is very powerful. There's lots of options. There's lots of things that you can do with it. But briefly, let me just show you guys just in case you guys do have the switcher and you guys wanna get started. So right over here, you're gonna to wanna to press the menu button. Once I press this menu button, a screen's gonna come up over here on the bottom right hand side. So why don't I go ahead and do that? I'm gonna press menu. Let me give you guys a nice little wide angle. I'm gonna press menu and we're gonna have the menu come up right there bang you can see how many different options we have so you're wondering well how do we scroll through this menu you got it you're going to be using the scroll button right over here to scroll through the menu so right now that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to scroll through and i'm going to give you guys a look to see what it's actually doing on my display screen so you can see that the very first option is color back. We got super source, we got type or key type, luma key, chroma key, key pattern, PIP, transition, DSK, FTB, which is fade to black, audio mixer, still generator, macro, stream, playback, settings okay so we have all of these different kind of let's say folders or options to mess around with so let's just say for an example 
I wanted to, to go into transition. I'm just going to scroll down to transition. And when I'm ready to select transition, I need to press the dial button again. So this dial is going to be acting as a scroll option to scroll through the different uh, folders or different settings and once you've found the setting that you want to go to you're going to need to press the dial down which is going to be basically acting as a select button so let's go ahead and press it down and what that did over here in mix it opened up a bunch of these little you'll notice we have wipe dip and mix so these are all the options within the transition uh, folder so right now which mode are we in right now we're in dip okay so why don't we go to a different mode let's go to wipe because wipe is going to give us those transitions that we can kind of fool around with right now so i'm just going to move this dial down to wipe i'm going to go ahead and select it because that's what i want to do and you'll notice that i can use the dial to kind of go up and down and adjust all these settings but this is the pattern option that i want to go into right now and you can see i'm using the dial to scroll through to, to see which kind of uh, transition I'd like to use. I don't know which one you guys want to try out, but let's try maybe this one here on the bottom right hand corner, which looks like it's coming from like an angle. So I'm just going to go ahead and select it. And now when I go ahead and make that transition, if we look at our screen using my T-bar, you can see that it's coming on an angle right there. See how it's coming on an angle? Those are some of the transitions that we have built in right into the switcher. So just for the hell of it, let's go ahead and select a different one. Let's try this uh, like four box one, this one right here that's highlighted. So I'm just going to select it and stand back and see what happens. And you can see we have like the four boxes that are transitioning like a cross type of an idea. So guys, overall, uh, hopefully you guys learned something along the way. There's so much info, so much stuff to cover. And I just wanted to give you guys a quick little breakdown and layout of everything so you guys can get started and start using your GoStream switcher right away and also see how powerful this switcher is and how much it's basically offering us at an affordable, reasonable price. So guys, it looks like everything that I wanted to cover in this section of the video. Leave any comments and questions down in the comment section down below because I do plan to make another video about the GoStream switcher strictly about in more detail about the menu and settings that we have over here. Well guys it looks like it's that time of the video where I'm going to give you guys my overall thoughts and review and opinion of the switcher. If you guys cannot tell already I'm definitely impressed with the overall design and functions and feature that this switcher has to offer. Along with the menu there's so many different options and settings that we can really just fine tune everything and just set it up the way that we like it overall very impressed i'm definitely going to be using this in my future videos if you guys do have any comments questions concerns let me know down in the comment section down below don't forget like subscribe comment share you already guys know what to do i'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the next video till next time peace